Okay, <clears throat> good morning. So today uh, lecture is from section 3.1 and in section 3.1 we will be talking about functions. So you guys uh, will have a PowerPoint available for you um, but also I will be using uh, notes when we'll be solving the problems. So section 3.1, it's about functions. Um, there's five objectives about functions. Uh, in first objective, we're going to just talk if the given relation represents the function. Um, then we're going to talk about how to find the value of function, how to find the difference quotient of function, how to find the domain of the function, um, of the given equation and how to find some difference product quotient of two functions. So next to the objectives, you guys see also um, in parentheses, the page uh, numbers from, uh, from the textbook. So you can read um, additionally uh, and find more information in your textbook. Okay. So first we're going to talk about how to determine if the relationship represents a function. Um, so I will give you the formal definition in the function, but um, starting with this example, you guys have the equation of a straight line y is equal to 3x minus 1. Uh, we know how to graph those type of equations. This is the straight line. And linear equations represents function. Okay, um, so we know that in this case, slope is 3, y-intercept is negative 1. So from y-intercept equal negative 1, uh, we went 3 units up and 1 to the right to find the second point, and we have enough uh, to graph the function. Uh, why this is the function? Because the definition of the function that means that each input, which means x, each x, should have exact assign exactly one output. So in this graph, like you see, every single x has assigned one y value, one output. So for x equal three, for example, y value will be right here. So every single input, which is x, has assigned one output. And that's the definition of the function. Um, also, here, um, there's different ways how we can show the relations. So we have um, relation here between state and the number of representative. Uh, so we call that this type of gram, uh, diagram, we call the, the mapping. So state, you may think about input and the output will be the number of representative. Okay, so in this case, to read that, um, diagram, we know that Alaska has one um, number of representative. Arizona has nine. California has 53. Colorado has seven. Florida has 27. North Dakota has one. Okay, and now the question will be if this relation represents the function. So definition of the function means that each input which are the states, that's the input, so here the input is um, each state and each state has assigned exactly one output. So like you see, uh, each state has assigned exactly one number of uh, representative. So this relation is also a function, okay? Now here, um, let's talk about this mapping. So you guys have to understand that that person, it's the input and the output, it's the phone number, okay? So we have Dan and we have his phone number. Gizmo, that's his phone number. Colin, has two different phone numbers and Phoebe has one phone number. So my question will be, is this relation represents the function? So here the answer means no, okay? 
Here the answer is no. Okay, what just happened? Okay, so the answer, sorry guys, is no. Why? Because look what happened. Colin has assigned two different phone numbers. Okay, so this is not the function because the definition of the function is that each input should have assigned only one output. So since Colin has two different phone numbers, um, because of that, this relation is not a function. No, it's not a function. Okay. And here there is um, another example when I'm going to ask you if this relation between animal and life expectancy uh, represents the function. So definition of the function means that each input where animals are input, uh, how long they live, that's the output. So the function means each input should have assigned only one output. Uh, and in this case, we have a function, okay? Because each input has only one output. Dog live about 11 years. Dog, 10. Kangaroo, 11. Rabbits, 7. So this is definitely a function. And to be a function, again, uh, what happened, um, two inputs like dog and kangaroos, they can share the same output. But again, you cannot have from one input, um, you cannot have one in, to one input assigned two different outputs. So this is definitely a function. Since I gave you a couple examples of function and something what is not a function, now it's time to introduce the definition of the function. So let X and Y be two non-empty set, a function from X to Y, it's a relation that associates with each element of X exactly one element of Y. So I'm just going to add a little more to that. So again, you guys have to understand that set X, that's your inputs, Y, that's the output, okay? And the definition of the function, I'm going to make that a little easier. Each input has a sign exactly one output. Okay, and I will give you a little note And that will help you later. In functions, X can't repeat Y, it doesn't matter. Y can repeat. So what is important about function? And you guys are going to see that soon an example that X coordinates can't repeat. Just remember that. Y, to be honest, it doesn't matter. Okay, they can repeat. Um, so the definition of the function, each input has assigned exactly one output. Okay, X, X coordinates, that will be our inputs. Y coordinates, that will be our outputs. Okay, also, just since we're going to talk um, in chapter three about functions, you guys have to also understand uh, that the inputs, oops, that those set of all inputs, which is our, all the X values we call domain. So set of all inputs, which again are X values, 
we call domain. Okay, now set of all outputs, which we call y values. we call range of the function, okay? So like you see, they're using the word range because the range represents the set of all y values, which are the outputs, okay? And here, we'll talk about a couple examples. Okay, so here in this example, we have to decide if the relation which you guys here see between calories and fat, um, if this relation represents uh, the function. So for each relation in figures 6, 7, and 8, uh, state the domain and range, then determine with whether the relation is the function. Okay, so here inputs are calories outputs fat okay so don't forget that the set of all inputs we call it domain and the set of all outputs we call it range so what they want you to do they want you to find the domain okay so domain in this relation, what you're going to do, that's the set of all inputs. So we're going to list all the inputs. So we have, again, I'm just going to use the shortcuts because here they're talking about when this um, a quarter of pound single. Um, so I'm just going to use those numbers, 580, 650, 541, 550, 700. So that's our input. So let's just list them. So we have 580. So all the inputs, they represent the domain. 580, 650, 541, 550, 500. Okay, so that's the domain range. represent set of all the outputs. So here you're going to list all the fat. So we're going to list 31, 37, 33, 29, and 43. Since we're listing them, order doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have this part. Okay, they ask you to find um, in this problem, they ask you to state the domain and range, and then we have to decide if the relation which you guys see represents function. So definition of the function, each input has exactly one output, so this is definitely function. Since each input has exactly one output. And remember about shortcut which I gave you um, right here, when I gave you the definition of the function, I mentioned that in function x values can't repeat. Okay, so look what happened. When you find the domain, and that will be useful later. When you find the domain, look what happened. Each number in the domain, it's different. So X values don't repeat. That means it's a function. Range doesn't matter. Okay, this is what is important, that you check in your domain, which is your X values, and making sure that they are different. X has to be different. So let me just adjust that um, here. We'll put X values. 
expands can't repeat has to be different okay so we're moving on so yes it's a function and here again um there's a little more problems so we'll go over all of them so we have figure seven on this slide in figure seven we have the relation between gas station and the price per gallon so input it's the gas station this is input price per gallon that's the outputs which also we have to think that um, in this problem, they want you to find the domain. So domain, you're going to list all the inputs. So domain will be Valera. We're listing all the gas stations. Shell, Texaco, Sitka. Okay. Now range, in figure seven, that's going to be the set of all the outputs. So we're listing the price. 3.19, 3.29, 3.35. Okay, so we find the domain um, and range uh, in the relationship between gas station and price. And now the question is if this relation represents the function so the definition of the function means each input has exactly one output. So each gas station has only one price uh, per gallon, which definitely match. Okay, so this is a function. Also, the shortcut function, we have a function when inputs, which is x values, don't repeat. So nothing repeats in our domain. So definitely this is a function. Here, in figure eight, um, we have the relationship between carrots and price. So this is our domain. Let's put it this way. This is our inputs, outputs. And we have to find the domain. Let's just separate them. So domain, again, you're going to list all the inputs. So we're going to list the carrots, 0 0.70, 0 0.71, 0 0.75, 0 0.78. Range, we're going to list all the outputs. So we're putting the price, uh, 1529, 1575, 1765, 1798, 1952. 1952. Okay, so I find domain and range. And now the question is if this relation represents function. So each input should have only one output. So this input has one output, but input. 0.71 has two different outputs. Because of that, this relation is not a function. So this is not a function. Not a function. And also going back to the shortcut, which I gave you, uh, why it's not a function, look what happened. Uh, I list domain once, but technically uh, this input repeats because 0.71 has a signed price of 1,575 and 0.71 has a signed price of 1,952. So something like that is not a function. Okay. Here you also guys have on the PowerPoint, which is provided to you, also have explanations. Okay, so we're going to talk about more examples. Okay, we're still talking about um, 
when we have to decide if the given relation is a function, we went over uh, the examples which with mapping, we call that mapping when they give you the graphs like that. Now they give you the points, ordered pairs. And you have to decide without graphing if set A, right here we're working with set A, represents a function, okay? So here you guys want to use the shortcut. Um, something to be a function, each input has to have one output, but also the shortcut is make sure that X coordinates don't repeat, okay? So here we definitely have a function. You only checking your X coordinates inputs. Each input it's different, nothing repeats, so this is a function. So A. Yes, function. In B, also we have to check if um, relation B it's a function, so I'm only checking my inputs, and I want to make sure that my inputs don't repeat. Since nothing repeat here, def definitely this is a function. Yes, function. Each input has to have assigned one output. So inputs are important. Make sure that they don't repeat. In set C, um, so I'm checking my inputs. I have negative 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and negative 3 again. So because here, input negative 3 repeats, okay? Input negative 3 has assigned output 9 and output 8, so negative 3 has assigned two different outputs, so this is definitely not a function. Not a function. Like you see, negative 3 has assigned two different outputs. So this is not a function. Now, uh, next what we're going to talk about it, so this is next example, when we have to decide from the equation uh, if this equation represents a function. So here, I will give you the shortcut. I will solve this one first, and then I will give you a shortcut to problems like that, how you will know quickly if the given equation is a function. By the way, um, this equation represents unit circle. This is the circle, x squared plus y squared equal one. This is unit circle. Uh, so what we're going to do, so each input should have only one output. What you want to do with this equation, you want to solve for y. Okay, so you're taking that circle, x squared plus y squared equal one. We're going to solve for y, so we're subtracting x squared from both sides, and we're getting y squared, it's equal one minus x to a second power, And to solve for y, look what happened. You will need to take the square root of both sides. So you're getting positive, negative, 1 minus x squared. So if I will ask you to graph it, if you guys won't even know um, that this is a circle, let's say we didn't learn circles. So what we did when we solved for y, so we're going to get two different outputs. We know that y is equal positive square root of 1 minus x squared, and y also is equal negative square root of 1 minus x squared. So I want to quickly show you that using the coordinates. So to graph that circle, which by now we know center 0, 0, radius is equal 1, but for, for in case if you guys um, didn't learn circles. So let's say when x is equal 1, okay? So to find the y value, the output for x equal one, because don't forget that x is input. 
Ys represents output. So when x is equal 1 to find the y value, you're going to take the square root of 1 minus 1 to a second power, and we're getting 0. And also, we have two equations for y. So we're going to use the second equation right now, and the answer will be negative square root of 1 minus 1 square negative 0. So in this case, we have 0.1 comma 0, because negative 0 is the same. Um, but let's make um, x equal 1 half. Okay, so to find the y value, you will have a square root of 1 minus 1 half to a second power, so we're getting square root of uh, 1 minus 1, 4, which is 3 over 4. I will just leave it that way. Uh, let's simplify square root of 3 over 2. And using the second equation right here, you have negative square root of 1 minus 1 half square. So negative square root of 3 over 4, which is negative radical of 3 over 2. So what happened here? That means that input one half has two different output, radical of three over two, and one half has an output negative radical of three over two. So this is not a function because using the definition of the function, each input should have assigned only one output. Look what happened. This input has two different outputs, radical of three over two and negative radical of three over two. So because of that, equation x square plus y square equal 1 is not a function okay and I just show you that um, you guys won't have to explain that on a test but I just show you if if I will try when we solve this equation for y you see, we got two different y values, positive and negative square root of 1 minus x squared. So that means every single input will have two different outputs. So that cannot happen for a function. Also, um, the shortcut, I will give you the note here. Note. And that works only for equation. If y verbal in the equation. Has even exponent that equation doesn't does not represent function. So my shortcut here, without doing any work, if you have multiple choice type of questions uh, like this on your homework, when you see y with positive, uh, not positive, with even exponent, 100% it's not the function. Okay, if you will have something like this, x squared plus y to the third power equal 1, this is a function, okay? Uh, but when you see that y to raise to even an exponent, like in this case, that's not going to be a function, okay? Um, so I think it's useful to remember that. Next, what we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about how to find the value of function. Okay, so we're going to use the substitution. Um, I would just keep that maybe confusing, all that graphs and stuff like that. Let's just go straight to the examples. So in this um, 
section 3.1, another objective is about finding value of a function. So we have a function. So this is the definition of the function. Um, again, uh, f of x, that technically means y. But when we're talking only about functions, not really about equations, we like to replace that y with f of x. Um, so you guys want to get used to of it. Again, if you will have to graph it, you graphing this function the same way like you graphing a straight line y is equal to x squared minus 3 of x. But since we're talking about functions, we like to use that notation f of x. That means function, and in the parentheses tells you that the input is x. Okay, um, But overall, that f of x has the same meaning like y. It's equal to x squared minus 3x. But we like to use that function notation, so you see in the parentheses that input of this function is x. Okay, so we have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x, and we need to evaluate. Um, so I will do a couple problems. I'm not going to solve all of them, just to um, show you how to evaluate functions. So let's do part A. We have to find, evaluate f of 3. So what that means, you see our function is f of x, so our x was we'll substitute with 3. So you have that equation of the function, which is 2x squared minus 3x. You're going to substitute x with 3. Okay. So f of 3 equal replace x with 3. And we're getting, don't forget, PEM does order of operation exponents first. So we have 3 to the second power, which is 9 times 2. We're getting 18 minus 9, and we're getting 9. Okay, so f of 3, it's equal 9. What that means, okay, that means that in this function, when x is equal 3, that f of 3, that represents the y coordinate of the point. So y is equal 9. So if I will ask you to graph it, which equation of this function, again, this is the parabola, you will have a point 3 comma 9. Okay? So again, x, this is y. So that's what we did. f of 3. Okay? I'm sorry. Not that way. So that y coordinate, we find that y coordinate doing this, replacing x value with uh, 3. Let's talk about b. b looks a little different. You have f of x plus f of 3. So look what happened. f of x, okay, uh, your input is x. So here you're just going to copy. the equation of the function, this is f of x, 2x squared minus 3x. Plus f of 3. So f of 3, we just evaluate that f of 3 right here. We know what is f of 3. Uh, f of 3 is equal 9, we just find it, plus 9. So we end up with 2x squared minus 3x plus 9. So we evaluate that function. Okay, um, in part C, we have 3 f of x. So how are you going to evaluate? 3 times, that means 3 times f of x. So you copy 3 times, and f of x, you're going to replace f of x with the equation of the function. So this is f of x, 2x squared minus 3x. and you will have to distribute 3 to each. So we're having 6x squared minus 9x. Um, D, let's just do all of them. I guess uh, I will just quickly 
I think I will do the rest because I don't have a space here. So I will do D and G. So D. We have to evaluate f of negative x. So don't forget that our function f of x was defined by equation 2x squared minus 3x. So f of negative x, you're going to replace, replace x with negative x. So f of negative x is equal to replace x with negative x and follow the equation minus 3 replace x with negative x and when you will do it i want you to evaluate that so you having parentheses first so negative x to a second power it's x squared so that will give you 2x squared and negative 3 times negative x will give you positive 3x And we will do G. G was F of X plus three. So to evaluate that, we're going to replace X with expression X plus three. So the equation of the function is two X squared. So two, you're going to replace X with X plus three and follow the equation, so square root, minus 3, and replace x with what you have in the parentheses, which is x plus 3. So leaving like this will be incomplete. So you guys need to simplify that, evaluate that. So we have 2. x plus 3 means you have x plus 3 times x plus 3. And here I will just distribute negative 3. So that will give you negative 3x minus 9. Here I want you to FOIL first. So that will give us 2 times. In parentheses, I'm going to put the answer of FOIL. So I have x times x, which is x squared. x times 3, which is 3x. 3 times x, which is 3x. 3 times 3, 9. Minus 3x minus 9. And let's simplify that. So we have 2 times. I'm going to combine like terms. So you have x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 3x minus 9. And now I'm going to distribute 2 to each. So that will give you 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 3x minus 9. Combine like terms. 12x minus 3x will give us 9. So we have 2x squared plus 9x. And we have 18 minus 9. That will give you 9. Okay. So going back. This is what we did. We evaluate the function at x plus 3. That means we replace original x with x plus 3, and that will be our answer. So definitely you're going to have problems like this uh, on your homework. So just uh, pay attention to them, OK? Um, let's go back to PowerPoint. Also. All the work it shows here, but I like to um, just show work uh, on myself. Okay. So the next slide, again, you guys, technically in this class, you should not use the graphing calculator, but um, you're taking this class from home. Uh, if you're using um, work with graphing calculator before, TI-84 plus C, Silver Edition, or any type of graphing calculator, the old version was TI-83, it actually teaches you how to evaluate the functions. So you can just follow the slide, or you can uh, read the book, and in book it shows you how to use TI-84 to evaluate the function. I'm not going over that, um, 
this because technically for this class we should not use graphing calculator. Next one, this is what students don't like, find the difference quotient of the function. Uh, at this case, uh, at, at this moment, I'm just going to give you the formula of difference of the quotient. Later in calculus, you use the difference of the quotient to find the derivative of the function, but this is not the topic for us. So, um, however, you have to know the difference quotient um, uh, formula, which is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So you need to know that. I just want to mention that um, in calculus, we're using that formula to find the derivative of the function. Okay. So we're just introducing that slowly. Okay, so different quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x equal h. What are we going to do with the difference of quotient? Okay, we're going to solve problems like this. Find the difference quotient of a function. So you have three different functions, and we need to find the difference of quotient using different quotient formula, which is right here. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And of course, h cannot be equal to zero. Um, more complicated um, examples means more work. OK, I know this one takes some. Some of them are a little tricky. Um, OK, let's do A. Let me show you work for A. So I'm going to show work for A. So again, difference of quotient. I'm just going to copy that formula. Uh, this is f of x plus h minus f of x divide by h. So this is what we need to evaluate. So to find the difference of quotient, like you guys see, first we need to evaluate the function. We need to find the value of the function. Um, we need to simplify. We need to know what is f of x plus h. So here, start with finding which is evaluating f of x plus h. How are you going to do it? You're going to replace x from your function with x plus h, okay? So I'm going to follow the equation of the function, which is two, where I used to have x, I'm plugging in x plus h, square minus 3 and replace x with x plus h. Of course, you want to simplify that. So f of x plus h equal, okay, first we need to FOIL this, x plus h square means x plus h times x plus h, and I have two in front of it, so I'm going to FOIL that. And here I'm going to distribute negative three, so this is negative three x minus three h. So f of x plus h equal two times, we're going to FOIL, so x times x, x square, x times h, x h h times x is x h h times h is h square minus 3x minus 3h so f of x plus h it's two times when you follow always you combine little terms so you have middle terms x square plus x h plus x h will give you 2x h plus h square minus 3x minus 3h and now when i foil are you going because you had two in front of the parentheses so you're going to distribute two to each so f of x plus h 
it's equal to x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h. I know it looks complicated, don't worry, when we will plug that information into difference of quotient formula, the stuff will start simplifying. So first I start with f of x plus h because that's what I have in the difference of quotient formula. Okay, don't forget that difference of quotient. It's right here, that's the formula. So I'm going back here. So this is part A, f of x plus h is 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h. Okay. Now I follow the rest um, of the formula. So now minus f of x. So f of x, it's the equation of original function. So that f of x, you're going to replace with 2x squared minus 3x. So minus f of x. So because you have equation of f of x, it's 2x squared minus 3x. So put that in parentheses and everything will be divided by h. And you guys need to evaluate that. Whew. Um, I think I have a, let me just move it. So I will move my work all the way right here. So again, f of x plus h minus f of x divide by h equal, okay? Um, so again, what I'm going to do, I need to distribute that minus to both. So let me copy that f of x plus h, which is equal to x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3x minus 3h. And right now I'm right here. Minus 2x squared and negative and negative will give you positive. So we'll have minus 2x squared plus 3x. Minus 2x squared. Minus 2x squared plus 3x. And everything has to be divided by h. Simplify. If you guys did that part correctly, if you evaluate, stuff should can't start uh, simplifying. So positive 2x squared, negative 2x squared, cancel. Uh, then we have negative 3x and positive 3x. This is just 0. So after simplifying, we end up with 4xh plus 2h squared minus 3h divided by h. And just simplify that. So now I'm going to divide each by h. So you have 4xh divided by h plus 2h squared divided by h minus 3h divided by h and cancel, cancel. So we have 4x h h cancel plus 2h minus 3. So this is the difference of quotient. So uh, yes, it takes time to solve it. Those type of problems, again, on the test, probably one problem like this easy one so uh b and c they more advanced hmm. let's see which is more challenge i think we will do b c you guys have um i will go over b c you guys going to have a solution so i will leave c for you to study I will do B for you guys. Difference of course, I will do one.
one more example. So, so I'm going over part B, difference of quotient. So again, difference of quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. This is the difference of quotient. And in part b, this is the function f of x, it's equal 4 divided by x. Okay, so when you find the difference of quotient, start with evaluating that f of x plus h, because that takes time. So first I'm going to evaluate what is f of x plus h. We're going to replace x with x plus h. So that will be 4 divided by x plus h. Okay. And now when I have that, I'm going to find the difference of quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x, which is original equation, divided by h equal. f of x plus h, we just find it. This is 4 divided by x plus h minus f of x, so minus 4 over x, and everything divided by h. Okay, here, what you want to do Let's work with the numerator first. So let me show how to simplify this one. So numerator, we have 4 over x plus h minus 4 over x. So what you want to do, you want to subtract two fractions. So you need your common denominator. And your common denominator with problems like that, what you're going to do, you're going to multiply your denominators. So common denominator will be x plus h times x, okay? So this is the common denominator. So I'm using the denominators of those two fractions, multiply them together. So to change the first fraction, to have the common denominator, you need to tap and battle of this fraction, multiply, since we already have x plus h. Right? So this fraction missing x. So I'm going to multiply, tap and battle by x. So we're having 4x over x plus h times x, okay? So you may think a little bit like a cross multiplication that the first fraction will be multiplied, will multiply top and bottom by the denominator of the second fraction. The second fraction right here, which is four of x, to get the common denominator, we're going to multiply here, top and bottom, by denominator of the second of the first fraction, which is x plus h. So we're building that common denominator. So I have minus four times x plus h over x times x plus h. So right now, my two fractions have the same denominator. So what I did, I built a common denominator. Again, to review, to find the common denominator, I multiply, excuse me, um, I multiply the common denominator. You're always going to find it when you have problems like that, when you multiply denominators together, which is x plus h times h uh, times x. And to build common denominator, look what happened. You take your original fraction and you multiply top and bottom by the denominator of the second fraction. So that's what I did. I take my first fraction, multiply top and bottom by x to build the common denominator. denominator. And you do the same thing with the second fraction. You take that 4 over x 
and you multiply top and bottom by the denominator of the first fraction. So that's what I did here. I took that 4 over x and I multiplied top and bottom by x plus h. And I built two equivalent fractions to get common denominator. So now to simplify that, you have fraction minus fraction since we have common denominator. So that will be just x times x plus h. And you're going to subtract numerators, which is 4x minus 4 times x plus h. And I'm going to distribute that 4. So that will be 4x minus 4x minus 4h divided by x times x plus h. And look what happened, 4x minus 4x is 0. So we end up with 4h divided by x times x plus h. So everything what I did here, hmm. so hope you guys see that that's numerator. So I simplify that numerator right here. So that 4 um, divided by x plus h minus 4 over x, after getting common denominator, this is the answer. So we'll go back, plug it in. So we have here 4h over x times x plus h divide by h. Okay. Just, oh, it. It looks like one on top of the other. So let me simplify that now right here. So we have 4h divided by x times x plus h. Divide by h means the same as multiply by reciprocal of h, just 1 over h. And now look what happened. h, h cancel, and we end up with 1 over x times x plus h. And this is the difference of quotient. And that's the answer. So again, I don't want you to have a, too much headache about the difference of quotient. Um, on the test, maybe one problem about difference of quotient, and that will be like a, I will give you quadratic equation or linear equation, something that doesn't take too much time to evaluate that. Um, because um, in difference of quotient formula, what takes time to evaluate that f of x plus h? Um, so more complicated function, it takes more time to do it. Okay, I'm going to skip C. You guys can read C. Um, Okay, here we have a radical. Again, it takes a little nasty here. Now, next, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the domain of function defined by the equation. So don't forget that the domain is the set of all the inputs. So uh, domain of functions, okay, you have four different functions and um, I really want to go over every single case here because uh, you need to know how to find the domain of quadratic function, which is A. So this is quadratic. I want you to make sure that you know how to find the domain of the square root rational function and this is also a rational function. Um, so let's solve all of them. So I guess I will move to notes. Okay. So domain. Very important topic, domain. So just remember, domain is set of all inputs. 
which input means x values, for which function can be evaluated, which technically you can find the y value. Okay, so a f of x equal x squared plus 5x. Quadratic function or linear function. This is how you find the domain. So domain, when you don't have any fraction, any square root, a very easy, nice equation, okay? So domain of all quadratic functions And linear functions, I want to also talk about linear functions. Like example, if, if you have y, it's equal 3x plus 5, and you have to find the domain of this, is the set of all real numbers. Okay, so we don't need to do anything because whatever you're plugging in for x here, for x you can pick any real number you want it and you always will be able to find the y value, which is the output. Okay, uh, so we don't have any restrictions about the x. Okay, we can always evaluate this function uh, for any x. You can pick any x you want it, positive, negative, zero. You always will be able to find the value of that function. Okay, so it's the set of all real numbers, um, which we can put that way. This is the domain. So function like this, quadratic function, linear function. Uh, also, you're going to have the set of all real numbers, functions like, since we talk about it, I want to give you a little more examples like um, linear function, polynomial functions, and all quadratic functions. We didn't really talk about polynomials, but polynomial functions. Polynomial, polynomial, let's say, x bring to the higher exponent than one, like x three to five x squared plus seven x plus three. Again, as long as you don't have a square root and fraction, domain will be the set of all real numbers, okay? So this is also the set of all real numbers. Um, B, B it's different. When you have fractions, which we call rational functions, okay? To find the domain, um, so to find the domain, solve equation, denominator. can be equal zero. So that's the equation which we're going to solve it. Um, let me show you based on this example. So in part B, you have function g of x, which is equal 3x divided by x squared minus 4. Okay, so this is fraction, what we know about the fraction. So domain, you have to find uh, all the values um, of x for which this function exists. Okay, so what we know about this equation, you know that you can never ever divide by zero. So to find the domain, that's why I put that here for you guys. You take your denominator and this function makes sense only if x squared minus four is not equal to zero. Okay, and you're going to solve that like equation, not equal zero means you're solving like equal to zero. So you're going to solve it for x So I will add four to both sides and we having x square cannot be equal four and to solve for x, you will take the square root. 
of both sides and you have x cannot be equal to 2 and x cannot be equal to negative 2. So what that means, what is the domain of this function? Okay, so domain, you guys have to picture the set of all x values for which function makes sense. In this case, we know that the values which we cannot pick are negative 2, that means x cannot be equal to negative 2, and x cannot be equal to positive 2. So what is the domain then? So the domain will be all real numbers. Let me just grab it. All real numbers except negative 2 and positive 2, because when x is equal to negative 2 and positive 2, the denominator is equal to 0. Okay. So our domain, you can write it using interval notation, is from negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 2, union 2 to positive infinity. So that's the x values, all the real numbers except negative 2 and 2. This is the interval notation. So I left the answer using interval notation. Sometimes they just ask you to write the sentence. So for function B, domain, you can say that domain are all real numbers. So technically, to evaluate this function, which is g of x, you can pick any real number for x except negative 2 and 2. So all real numbers except 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 I misspelled that. I know except negative 2 and 2, sometimes they using notation this way. All the real numbers, all x, such that x cannot be equal to negative 2 and x cannot be equal to. Okay, so we read that. That's the domain. You read that such that. So for domain of this function, you can pick any input except negative 2 and 2. So make sure that when you guys solving problems on my MATLAB, you're paying attention how they want you to leave the answer. Um, let's talk about part C to find the domain. Part C, we're talking about square root functions. So square root functions, okay? Um, any function which has a square root, okay? To find the domain, so to find domain of any square root function, solve the inequality expression under square root greater equals zero. So this is what you're doing for square root function. Okay, so in our example, this is what you have in part C. You have h of t equal square root of 4 minus 3t. So to find the domain in this case, you have to find the t values for which you can evaluate that function. So what we know about the square root, that the expression under square root to evaluate that has to be zero or, or greater than zero. So that's why you're solving that, that expression under square root has to be greater or equal to zero, okay? So to find the domain here, 
we're going to take the expression under square root, which is 4 minus 3, 2. And this function makes sense only if that 4 minus 3, 2, uh, 3, t is greater or equal to 0, because you cannot have a negative number under square root. So solve this inequality for t. So we subtract 4. We're getting negative 3t greater equal negative 4. Divide each by negative 3. Since we're dividing by negative, inequality will reserve, uh, reverse to less or equal 4 over 3. So in this case, t is the input. So what will be the domain? Again, input is t. So I'm going to graph that. t less than equal 4 over 3. You're putting 4 over 3. We have equal sign, so we're including that. Less than, so we're shading everything to the left. So this is the domain right here. The solution of that inequality. So that's the domain. So how are we going to leave the answer? Okay, um, make sure that you're paying attention how my MATLAB wants you to leave the answer using interval. Using interval notation, we'll have the domain. So domain is the set from negative infinity to four over three bracket, okay? Or using set builder notation sometimes so again, we call that set builder notation. You can leave the solution that way. Domain is all the t's such that t is less than equal 4 over 3. So technically, I'm rewriting this one in a set builder notation. So all the t's such that t has to be less than or equal 4 over 3. Um, so again, just remember that when you have function which have a square root, only I'm talking square root, um, you, the expression to find the domain, the expression under square root has to be greater or equal 0. So square root functions, and I would just put with also this one works works also with any radicals with even index with even index. So for example, if if I will give you function like this, find the domain of four root of x plus three, you will do exactly the same thing. You will take the expression, so this is even, for its even index, so you will take the expression under radical and you will solve that inequality that has to be greater or equal zero. Only even index, okay? So the same thing. Usually you only see square root. Now going back to first problem right here, when the domain was all real numbers, um, also for radicals with add index domain, it's all real numbers. So let me just give you that information. So domain, it's all real numbers, guys. I know it's a lot of information, but it's good to have them in one place. Any polynomial function like this, any quadratic function, any linear function. So like you see, we have linear function, quadratic function, polynomial function. Also, also radical function, radicals with add index. Example, f of x equal cube root of 3x plus 5. When you have a radical with add index, domain 
is all real numbers okay so just have that in one place fractions we know what we do we take in the denominator cannot be equal to zero square root or any radicals with even index you're solving inequality expression under radical greater or equal zero what else you guys can have you can have mix of both um I think I'm going to break this lecture after domain um, into two parts. Um, and D, going to D. D is the mix of both. You have function f of x equal, and we have a square root of 3x plus 12, divide by x minus 5. So, to find the domain of this function, this function has both. So first, we're going to find the domain of square root of 3x plus 12 so I mentioned to you guys that when we have a square root, to find that domain, you take the expression under radical and um, make that greater or equal zero. So it's going to be 3x plus 12 has to be greater or equal zero because that equation only works with when the expression under radical is positive. Solve or equal zero, solve for x, so subtract 12 and we're getting 3x greater equal negative 12, divide by three, divide by three, you're getting x greater equal negative four. So here we have this. Next, look what happened. Second, we have a fraction. Overall, the major operation in this function is division. So what we need to do, second, we're going to make, we know that denominator can never ever be equal to zero. So we're going to solve this. Our denominator, which is x minus five, can't be equal to zero. Solve for x, and we're getting x can be equal to five. So we have two conditions. To find the domain of function f of x, what we need to do, we need to combine those two conditions together. Okay, so the best way, again, this is what I always do, okay? So I have two restrictions for this function f of x. x can be equal 5, and x has to be greater or equal negative 4. Uh, the best scenario to see that final domain, I recommend it to graph it both of them on the number line. So let me graph the green one, x greater equal negative 4. So we have negative 4 greater equal. So we're shading everything to the right. From the second condition, we have that x can't be 5. So I'm putting 5 which means we can select any x except 5. Okay, so what's going to be the domain? So here the domain will be, domain will be where two colors overlap, so combine, which means find intersection, maybe. find intersection of both. So intersection of both will be where two colors overlap, this and this. So this is our domain, where two colors overlap. So don't forget that that green one was right here. Okay. So the main will be 
using interval notation. And so a bracket, negative 4, 5, union, 5, 2, positive infinity. This is the main of this function. So this is using interval notation. Okay. Now, um, using set builder notation. Writing this answer, you will put that the domain. Is the set of all X such that X has to be greater or equal negative 4 and x can be equal 5. So the set builder notation means that you guys putting uh, the solutions of both equations together. Uh, I think the most that's what I'm using uh, and most popular is actually interval notation. So here because our function had combination of both radical when we have denominator. So when you see fraction, you always take the denominator and make sure that it's not equal to zero. And also we have the square root. So we have to give the condition that three X plus 12 has to be greater or equal to zero. So we solve inequality and equations, and then we combine them together, which means if you will graph them, and I recommend it to always graph those conditions, when you have combination of couple things, like in this example, uh, your domain will be where two graphs, two solutions intersect. I'm going to stop this video because the next one is about um, how to find uh, the sum and difference and product of the function. And I don't want this video to be too long. So let me just stop here. This is part one.